Number 9. Bismarck The German battleship Bismarck was built during the late 1930s. At one point, it was Europe's most formidable warship, yet it sank just eight days after it hit the seas. But why? During its maiden voyage, the vessel was on a mission to intercept Allied cargo ships that were carrying supplies to Britain. It sank the legendary flagship HMS Hood in the first days of the voyage. But the victory came at a huge cost. The English were infuriated, and they retaliated against the Nazis at full force, sending the British Atlantic Navy after the Bismarck. They caught up with the German foe, and an all-out battle ensued, with the British emerging victorious. The Bismarck sank to the bottom of the sea, and it remained missing until 1989, when the wreck was discovered by Robert Ballard, the famous oceanographer who found the Titanic. It was clear, based on the wreck's pristine condition, that the warship was well built. The swastikas that had been painted on it shortly after its construction were still visible. What's even more surprising is how intact the vessel was after landing on an extinct underwater volcano and tumbling two-thirds of the way down the 3,300-foot slope. The Bismarck's hull was still intact, indicating that it was entirely flooded before it sank. If it hadn't been, then it would have imploded once it went under due to the pressure of the surrounding water. But it doesn't really matter that the ship looked so good on the ocean floor. It was useless there, and while it was a disappointment for the Nazis, it came as great news to the Allies and the rest of the world. Number 8. USS Grenadier The American submarine USS Grenadier sank in the Straits of Malacca in 1943 after being attacked by a Japanese aircraft. A torpedo struck the vessel as it closed in on two Japanese cargo ships between Sumatra and the Malay Peninsula. After failing to repair the sub, the crew deliberately scuttled it. The Grenadier's 76 crew members were taken as prisoners aboard Japanese ships, and the sunken submarine was lost. Divers located the wreck a few years ago, sitting 280 feet below the waves. They confirmed its identity as the Grenadier by cross-referencing military records and diving to the sea floor to investigate it firsthand. Due to the vessel's depth, the team had to use a special combination of oxygen, nitrogen, and helium to breathe and the divers could only stay at the site for a few minutes at a time. It took five trips to the site before the divers could say with a fair amount of certainty that the wreck's measurements matched the specifications for the Grenadier. The next step is for the U.S. Navy to officially confirm the find. Four of the crew members who were taken prisoner by the Japanese died in captivity. The rest survived in prison camps until the war ended. The team that found the Grenadier plans to continue searching for two wrecked British World War II submarines that are believed to be in the area the HMS Stonehenge, and the HMS Porpoise. Number 7. Unmarked Grave and Sunken Airplane In late September 1944, the Allies launched Operation Market Garden, which sought to free the Netherlands from Nazi control and encroach on northern Germany. Thousands of paratroopers landed on key bridges and liberated several parts of the country. Somewhere between 15,000 and 17,000 soldiers died during the mission. While searching a field recently in the municipality of Best, a Dutch treasure hunter's equipment detected ammunition and a military tag belonging to a German soldier who was buried in an unmarked grave. His remains were found at the bottom of a foxhole, but there was no other body or military equipment nearby. The Salvage and Identification Service of the Royal Netherlands Army is investigating the case and may be able to identify the soldier by his identification tag. The discovery came just days after news broke that an amateur diver named Mark Sarazen had found a World War II-era plane at the bottom of Lake Simon in Quebec. Police told the local press that Sarazen had captured images of an object that could resemble an airplane. The Canadian Army also got involved in the investigation. Sarazen claimed that he saw bodies and kerosene barrels on the plane, and that he hit the propeller. He was unable to share images and footage of the discovery while the authorities worked to confirm it. They haven't yet announced whether Sarazen's suspicions about it being a World War II-era plane are correct. What do you think about these discoveries? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 6. Hidden Hatch a collection of buildings in Kent, England with a history dating back to the 1860s currently function as a girls' boarding school called the Benedin School. During World War II, however, the site served as a military hospital. A group of four 10th grade students recently encountered an unexpected reminder of the property's past. During a study session in their recently remodeled boarding house last year, Olivia Boyce, Ella Gorier, Izzy McLean, and Haley McNally spotted a hidden hatch on the wall disguised by a wardrobe. The curious pupils moved the wardrobe out of the way and opened the mysterious door, which led to a small section of the building's eaves. 14-year-old Izzy McLean crawled into the space and found a collection of artifacts dating back to the 1940s, including candy wrappers and letters. In addition to Milky Way, Arrow, and Burnaville packaging, there was a Lux soap packet, a cigarette wrapper, and matches. 
The most telling items are fragments of two letters that were likely exchanged between staff members who were stationed at the hospital. One letter, dated in 1941, was written by a woman named Betty to her sweetheart, Bobby. It includes details on how his family members were doing and updates about her life, including a mention about a recent theater visit. Speaking with reporters, Haley McNally said she thought the discovery was cool because it helps bring the property's past back to life, adding a realistic element to the history the students often hear about. She added that the girls thought about leaving a mask in the hatch so that in 30 years, whoever discovered it would be reminded of the COVID era. Number 5. The Karlsruhe In April 1940, the Nazis invaded Norway through the port city of Kristiansand, destroying its maritime defenses in a matter of hours and forcing the country's king and government to flee to Britain. To aid in their conquest, the Germans used a repurposed ship that was built in the 1920s called the Karlsruhe. The 571-foot-long swastika-bearing vessel was hit by a British submarine torpedo shortly into its return journey. Its crew evacuated and the Nazis deliberately sank the ship 15 miles off the Norwegian coast, where it came to a rest 1,607 feet below the water's surface. The Karlsruhe is detailed in historical accounts, but the wreck's whereabouts were a mystery for around 80 years, according to maritime archaeologist Frude Kvola, who spoke with journalists. It was finally found last year by the Norwegian power grid operator Statnet with the help of an expert who identified the submarine in images and sonar scans. The sunken vessel was just 50 feet from a subsea power cable that the company has been operating since 1977, and it was first spotted during a routine inspection. The Karlsruhe was the last large World War II era vessel belonging to the Germans that had remained missing. It may contain thousands of liters of oil and other hazardous materials, which experts warn could lead to an ecological disaster in the event of an attempted salvage. And while most of the Karlsruhe's crew was evacuated, it's unknown whether it will ultimately be classified as an underwater war grave. What should professionals do in a case like this one, where salvaging a wreck could potentially lead to an ecological disaster? Tell us your ideas in the comments and make sure you hit that like and subscribe to the channel. Number 4. Bunker Inside a Roman Fort one of the best-preserved Roman forts in Britain can be found in the Channel Islands at Alderney Nunnery. It was built during the 4th century and went on to serve as a fort and barracks during medieval times before ultimately becoming a Nazi bunker during World War II. The site's history is just now coming to light, even though excavations began during the 1930s. Archaeologists recently confirmed their long-held suspicions that the site dates back to the Roman era. They determined that it was probably built shortly before the empire collapsed. At the time, the Romans were probably in a panic as they scrambled to protect their territory against invaders. The site's 10-foot-thick walls made it ideal for military use even 1,500 years after it was built. When the Germans took control of the Channel Islands in 1940, they evicted the entire population. They then built fortifications, bunkers, tunnels, and two forced labor and concentration camps. Evacuations are ongoing. Archaeologists recently unearthed several features that the Nazis implemented after they seized the islands, including buildings and drains. Evidence shows that the Germans installed a bunker within the walls of the Roman fort. They left one area alone completely, however. Known as the Sun Room, it may contain important details about what happened to the site after the Roman Empire collapsed. Experts have started to wonder if there was once a convent on the property. It'll take some time to figure it out as they continue to examine the history behind the jumbled mess of artifacts and buildings at the site. Number 3. Five Sunken Submarines Families of soldiers who perished in World War II-era submarine wrecks that were only recently found at the bottom of the sea are finally gaining much-needed closure. Since 2011, ocean explorer Tim Taylor and his crew have discovered seven previously undetected sunken vessels, including five that disappeared during the Second World War. Included among them is the USS R-12, which went down 12 miles off the Florida Keys during a training exercise. Helen Cashel Baldwin, whose father was among those who went missing, spent 70 years longing to know exactly what happened to him and unable to properly grieve. Taylor took Baldwin and her siblings to the site and showed them drone images of the wreckage, enabling them to finally have a memorial and pay their respects. Taylor just received the Navy Distinguished Public Service Award, which is the Navy's highest civilian award for discovering the final resting places of 288 soldiers. He told NBC that he was motivated by his desire to bring comfort and closure to surviving relatives, who were left with a void from not knowing what happened to their fallen loved ones. He employed the help of autonomous robots and credits modern technology for its role in his success, but it's the genuine drive to help families that brought his mission full circle. Number 2. An Out-of-Place Explosive while gardening in her backyard in early May, Missouri resident Pamela Lovett noticed a rusty, mud-covered object in the ground. She took it inside and her husband, Sam Coffey, washed it off and began scraping away at it with a knife in an effort to identify what it was. 
Lovett noticed Japanese lettering on the item and suddenly yelled at Coffee to stop what he was doing because he might have a bomb in his hands. Using Google Lens, the couple determined that it was indeed probably a bomb. What started out as an ordinary afternoon turned chaotic when the pair called the local sheriff's office, who arrived along with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, and the Air Force, Coffee told NBC News. Authorities made Lovett and Coffee wait outside the home while they set up a perimeter and investigated. Experts determined that the bomb was still live and had a 500-foot blast range. Thankfully, the St. Louis Regional Bomb and Arson Unit removed the explosive without incident while making sure to remind Lovett and Coffee how lucky they were they didn't get hurt or killed. The couple posted the shocking news on social media and it went viral. Meanwhile, the bomb was detonated in a controlled explosion at an Air Force base. Nobody knows how the foreign bomb ended up in someone's yard in America, and it's possible, perhaps even likely, that we'll never know. What are your theories on how it got there? What would you do if you found a World War II-era bomb in your garden? Tell us in the comments down below. Number 1. A Rediscovered Wreck Decades after a P-38 fighter aircraft crashed in the forest near Waldeg, Austria, the U.S. Department of POW MIA Accounting Agency was finally able to investigate the site and has found possible human remains. This comes as welcome news to Bob Mitchell of Fort Smith, Arkansas, whose brother, 23-year-old 2nd Lieutenant Henry Donald Mitchell, was piloting the plane when it went down. While a forensic anthropologist has yet to examine the remains and verify them as being human and belonging to Henry Mitchell, the discovery offers hope to Bob, who has always wondered what happened to his brother. An email that he received about the discovery stated that the purported remains are going to be transported to a laboratory and examined for confirmation. The findings will hopefully end Bob's more than 20-year search, which began in 1997. The crash site was located in 2017, but there were delays excavating it due to complications with the landowner. American and Austrian agencies and diplomats worked together to develop the relationships necessary for gaining access to the site, but they were not permitted to dig until after the landowner passed away and his son was more open-minded to the idea. The plane's identity has been confirmed, meaning that any remains that proved to be human likely belonged to Henry Mitchell. For a long time, Bob found it difficult to believe that his brother went down with the plane, especially since Henry's fellow soldiers didn't see the aircraft crash, leaving them with a lingering hope that the pilot had somehow survived and theorizing that he was perhaps taken prisoner. But the plain and simple truth was that nobody had any way of knowing exactly what happened until now, and hopefully the forensic examination provides the answers that Bob is looking for. Thanks for watching. World War II buffs, we cover lots of great historical content. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.